Bernie Sanders and Neera Tandon faced off once again, perhaps for the final time. He was questioning her during her confirmation hearings, and thankfully he brought up things that she said not just about him, but progressives in general that are just deeply disgusting. And if Joe Biden is serious about trying to unite the country, he shouldn't just be trying to unite Democrats with Republicans. He should be trying to unite with progressives as well, because like it or not, we are a very large portion of the electorate. So if you want true unity, you can't spit in the eyes of progressives, people who the Democratic Party needs, and just expect us to forget about it. So these things, they have to be addressed. They can't be swept under the rug. And Bernie Sanders did bring this up. And here is his questions, uh, the line of questioning that he gave to Neera Tandon. Uh, I'm really glad that he decided to uh, speak on this. I have a letter in front of me from, as I'm sure you have seen, a number of Republican members of the House concerned about some of the things you said as uh, the head of CAP. But of course, your attacks were not just made against Republicans. They were vicious attacks made against uh, progressives, uh, people who I have worked with, me personally. So as you um, come before this committee, to assume a very important role in the United States government uh, at a time when we need serious work on serious issues and not personal attacks on anybody, whether they're on the left or the right. Can you reflect a little bit about some of your decisions and the personal statements that you have made in recent years? Yes, Senator, I really appreciate that question. And I recognize that my language and my uh, expressions on social media, you know, um, caused hurt to people. And I feel badly about that. And I really regret it. And I recognize this. It's really important for me to demonstrate that I can work with others. And I look forward to taking that burden. And I apologize to people on either the left or right who are hurt by what I've said. Okay. And as you know, it's not a question of being hurt. We're all big boys. And I don't see too many girls here, but big boys. Uh, who get attacked all the time. But it's important that we make the attacks expressing our differences on policy and that we don't need to make personal attacks no matter what view somebody may hold. So can we assume that as the director of the OMB, we're going to see a different approach if you are uh, appointed than you have uh, taken at the uh, cap? Absolutely. And I would say, you know, social media does... Um, lead to too many personal comments and my approach will be radically different. I'm really, really thankful that he brought that up. But her answer was just, it was so fake, so disingenuous. Um, she's not sorry for anything. She doesn't regret anything. Like she, like all of us, is a shit poster. The difference is that like in the events, this were to come up for me or you, it would be a lot bigger deal, but because she has so much sway and influence in the Democratic Party, they're choosing to kind of just like dismiss all of her bad behavior online uh, and not just online, but her physically assaulting a journalist who was technically an employee of hers, outing one of her own staffers who was the victim of sexual harassment at CAP. It's just it's really frustrating that they allow this to happen like they, they pretend to be you know, the individuals who take the high road. They say, well, when Republicans go low, we go high. But that's not true. Like, your actions don't indicate that that's actually the case. So it's it's deeply frustrating. And even Nina Turner spoke up and said she has viciously attacked the progressive movement. She has also lied and attacked me too. So it's like every single person who did not unequivocally and loyally support Hillary Clinton or whoever the Democratic Party establishment was like trying to shove down our throats, Neera Tandon attacked them. Everyone is the victim of her wrath. Um, and so all of this, uh, I'm sorry, backpedaling bullshit. Like, uh, uh, who's buying this? And it's funny because we saw how disingenuous and fake she was there. But I want to play another clip with uh, Senator Kennedy. He's asking her a very basic question. And even though she was fake and disingenuous throughout the entire confirmation hearings, like, she couldn't answer the most simple question ever. I I have to tell you, I'm very disturbed about your personal comments about people. Um, you know, it's not just one or two. I think you deleted about a thousand tweets. And it wasn't just about Republicans. And I don't mind disagreements in policy. I think that's great. I love the dialectic. But the comments were personal. I mean... 
you call Senator Sanders everything but an ignorant slut. That is not that is not true. And Senator. when when you when you said these things, did you mean them? I would have said ignorant. <laughs> Senator, I have to say, I deeply regret my comments. I understand that, but and when I you said them, did you them. mean them? I understand you've, you you've taken them back, but did you mean them? I'd say the discourse over the last four years on all sides has been incredibly polarizing. I'm asking about yours. Did you mean them? I really feel badly about them, Senator. Did you mean them? I feel badly about them. Did you mean them when you said them? I mean, I would say social media is a is is I. Did you mean them when discourse. you said them? I feel terribly about them. Did you mean them when you said them, or were you not telling the truth? I. I, I mean, I feel badly. I look back at them. I'm, I said them. I feel badly about them. I deleted tweets over. Are you saying that because you want to be confirmed? No, I felt badly okay. about them. And Did you mean them. them when you said them? Senator, I, I must have meant them, but I really regret them. I want the record to reflect that I did not call Senator Sanders an ignorant slut. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know how I should take that, Senator Kennedy, but uh, Senator Kane. First of all, that was just a weird clip, and I'm assuming that Kennedy just watched uh, this scene from The Office. Try it, you ignorant slut! Second of all, she has lied so much, I don't understand why she couldn't just say, uh, no, I didn't mean all of those mean things that I said. It was, you know, the heat of the moment, and I was battling with folks online. It was Bernie Sanders versus Hillary Clinton, and then Bernie Sanders versus Kamala and Pete Buttigieg, and I felt defensive, and, you know, I didn't like Bernie Sanders, so I said some really horrible things that uh, I didn't actually mean. Like, you could have just said something like that. You're already lying and faking it. So why can't you just answer that question? Like, I don't think she realizes how ridiculous it looks. Now, perhaps she was anticipating that he was going to, like, follow up if she says she didn't mean it with something else. Like, why why did you say it? I don't know. Some gotcha. But still, I mean, you are so fake. I don't understand how you don't just like answer a simple question. Like this isn't rocket science. He's just asking you, did you mean the things that you say? And it's kind of a stupid question to begin with, but I mean, just give him a fucking answer. So look, I think that more than enough uh, has been demonstrated over the past week. Uh, that just proves she is not capable of leading an agency. She's incapable of working with others. Like, look at the way that she led CAP. If you literally dox sexual harassment survivors or punch members of uh, your staff, technically, she punched Faz Shakir, Bernie's campaign uh, manager in 2020, when he was working for Think Progress, which is part of CAP. Like, if you do things like that, you should never get a job in government again. But the Democratic Party establishment loves her. Now, all of these issues that were brought up about her personality, it is far less important than what I think is addressed here, and that is the corruption at CAP. All right, let me get to another issue that concerns me very much. I happen to believe that big money interests have an undue influence over the economic and political life of our country. That uh, too often, uh, campaign contributions are what determines policy rather than the needs of ordinary Americans. And according to the Washington Post, since 2014, the Center for American Progress has received roughly five and a half million dollars from Walmart, uh, a company that pays its workers starvation wages, nine hundred thousand dollars from the Bank of America, five hundred fifty thousand from J.P. Morgan Chase. $550,000 from Amazon, $200,000 from Wells Fargo, $800,000 from Facebook, and up to $1.4 million from Google. In other words, our CAP has received money for some of the most powerful special interests in our country. Uh, how will your relationship with those very powerful special interests uh, impact your decision making if you are uh, appointed to be the head of OMB? Senator, I thank you for that question. It will have zero impact uh, on my uh, on my decision making. I'm actually uh, cap took a number of positions that disagreed vigorously uh, with the policy positions of those institutions. But I appreciate this question, and 
Uh, and it is my role, it will be my role to ensure that I am only serving the interests of the American people, the administration, and its agenda to address rising inequality and address the needs of working families. Oh, I can assure you that all of this money that I took from large multinational corporations is going to have zero impact on the way that I act as director of the OMB. So I'm like literally the one human being on the planet who is not influenced when entities and individuals do good things for me and are kind to me. That doesn't have any impact on my behavior whatsoever. I'm immune to it. Who believes this? Who buys this? I know Bernie Sanders doesn't believe it. And anyone who thinks money in politics is an issue shouldn't believe it. Because you wouldn't be concerned with money in politics in general if you weren't actually cognizant of the influence that it has over lawmakers and people in influential positions, such as the leader of CAP. So, I mean, we, we know exactly that Neera Tandon is terrible and whoever else Biden would nominate wouldn't be great. But I think you can do better than Neera Tandon, Joe Biden. I think that there's someone else out there who's less divisive, less hateful towards members of your own party, someone who just is actually capable of working with others, like an adult. So why, why are you nominating her? It's just, it's really irritating to me that Democrats have these select figures like Rahm Emanuel, Neera Tandon, Tom Perez, and they just shuffle them around in different positions. And it's irritating. It's obnoxious. Like, you always complain about how, oh, well, young people don't come out and vote for us. Maybe it's because you completely shut out younger folks. You don't put them in positions of power. You don't want to actually hear their voices. I mean, if this is easy. So I hope that Bernie Sanders doesn't vote for near attendant. If he does, I will be extremely disappointed. Um, I hope that his knowledge of money and politics and its corrupting influence is enough to persuade him to do the right thing. I don't want Bernie Sanders to just, like, go along to get along. Like, I'm glad he brought up these questions, but now, you know, put those words into action, do the right thing, vote against her. Now, I think this is probably all a foregone conclusion. She'll most likely be confirmed, uh, perhaps by the time you see this video, but nonetheless, uh, she should not be confirmed. Uh, she is a smear merchant for the Democratic Party establishment, and she absolutely is not qualified to hold a position of power. Not at that level. You held... You know the, you know the thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man, man.